Hello, this is Ross with DragTheBar.com and um, aka Milwaukee 2 and today I will be playing four tables of 100 no limit full ring. So um, normally I only play two tables in my videos but um, those are usually six max videos. So um, I decided to do four tables of full ring just because uh, the full ring tables um, take the players usually take longer to act and you probably get about half the number of hands in uh, uh, per hour as you would at a six max table so I think uh, four tables should be fine for uh, for the full ring video so um, start here with a7 I'm just gonna be folding here to his open and uh, the same thing with six nine I'll be folding to the open my hold the manager stats should be coming up um, go over them. Um, top row it's just uh, VPP, preflop raise, aggression factor, and then the bottom row it is uh, three bet percentage, fold to three bet percentage, and then just number of hands played. So all of my uh, all my stats that uh, show up on the HUD are all the preflop stats. So I uh, pick up five six here and um, the cutoff opens and I'm just going to be folding this one as well. Pick up nines here on the table to the right, so um, it's a good chance I'll be playing this hand. Alright, there's a limper, so alright, I'm gonna isolate the limper with nines here. Don't have a whole lot of reads on this player, but he's probably fishy. I only have four hands, but um, he's not playing a full stack, plus the fact that he's limping. And I uh, got heads up action on this uh, last table here. opening uh, king five suited here and um, I'm able to take that one down here with uh, the nines I have an over pair to the board and I'm just gonna continuation bet my standard amount six into nine um, and see if we can get action and he just folds and in that spot um, I that's my standard continuation bet is uh, six dollars into nine dollars but um all right, he's limping again. So if I had to do it again, you know, knowing that this guy's a fish, I might even just overbet the flop there, bet something like uh, fifteen dollars or so, and um, then it just makes an easier turn shove, just because the board is pretty dry and my nines are gonna be. Um, it's gonna be a lot of kind of nasty turns, like over cards and flush cards. So um, against fish like that, I might even make a play like just overbetting the flop, and then it's an easy turn shove instead of having you know it makes it easier to play instead of having to play three streets there. And um, a lot of times these fish, I mean, if he has a pair there, he's gonna go with it. Especially if he has top pair there, he's not folding. Okay, this guy's asking me a question. W dollar sign SD. Not even, uh, I probably should know what that means, but to be honest, I don't even know what W dollar sign SD means. I know it's a stat that'll show up in Hold a Manager. I'm not exactly sure what it stands for, but uh, he left the table. So I'm going to see, I'm going to look at uh, the Stars Lobby, see if I can find another good table. Um, as far as, th I've been playing the uh, 100 full ring games uh, for the last week or so, may maybe even a little more than a week, and uh, I'm going to fold 5-6 here to the small blind open. Um, and the tables, they play, um, there's a lot of regs in the games, That's there's no doubt about that. Um, I'd say a good game has at least one fish sometimes uh if you have two fish it's usually a pretty good game but at the same time um most of the rags in this game are here for a reason they're just grinding out vpps and a lot of them are not very good at all so uh, under the gun opens and this guy's pretty tight so he's got a, a strong range here so i'm optimistic about getting action uh definitely gonna three bet my aces up this uh player here with the half stack calls on the button and I, i'd like action from him as well here I made it from four to thirteen, which is uh, pretty standard f 
for me. Um, I, I find a lot of players at this uh, at this stick will four bet or not four bet will make their three bets way too large, uh, way too large to to ever really be able to balance their three bet range. I find a lot of players if you open to three, they'll just they'll just bump it up to thirteen. I've seen even fourteen or fifteen. Um, and that's without any colors. That's just one open. You know, the pot's sitting at about four dollars with a hundred, a <clears throat> hundred big blinds effective. You got players uh, three betting really large. My standard three bet um, in position is from three. It is assuming we're playing a hundred big blind stacks. If they open to three, I'm usually going to nine, nine or ten. Sometimes nine point five. I think is usually what I go to. Um, out of position, it's usually the same, three to ten. Um, and um, you can make the argument for going a little bigger out of position, but uh, I find that going to ten out of position works works just as fine. Playing 100 big blind stacks um, because it's no problem um, betting three streets to get the stacks. And here I check uh, deuce ten in the big blind. I'm just going to bet out with uh, my middle pair of 10s. And Okay, I get raised by the under the gun limper. I'm not going to be playing that one any further. Um, checking there is fine. Check folding, but uh, I don't think it's bad to uh, to lead into that flop either. I'm going to have the best hand once in a while and uh, might be able to take it down. So I uh, picked up 4-9 here. I'll be folding that. Ace-8 here in uh, middle position. Um, you know, I'm going to open this one. It, it's really not a standard open at all, but, um, looking at the table here, all right, I got called here, so I'm not liking that very much. He's probably got a hand. He's in position against me. He's probably got a better hand than me. He's, uh, relatively tight, so th this hand's not really going to play well for me here, but, uh, flat middle pair, and I'm just going to continuation bet. Take a look at this guy's stats. So um, so far with the stats I have on him, he folds to c-bet 40%, and he raises c-bet 20%. He just calls on the the draw board, and I'm just gonna fire again, just because I think I have the best hand a lot. And um, all right, the river brings a flush, and um, I'm just gonna fire again, almost full pot here, and uh, see if I can get him off his hand, and I can't. And uh okay, he had king queen there, so and then snap calls me with top two. Um I think there's a good chance I might have been able to get him off a of queen there with the the full pot bet, maybe a hand like ace queen. Um, which is really what I put him on was a queen there. And uh while while I'm repping a pretty narrow range by uh betting big on that river, I find that a lot of players at this stake aren't really thinking about that. A lot of them are just thinking about, um, they're 24 tabling. They're mostly thinking about, you know, just the value of their hand. And they're like, oh, overcard brings a flush. I'm not going to be calling this river. So I think that bet is fine. I kind of got uh, a little unlucky maybe that, uh, that it made top two for him. Because I think if he just had one pair there, like ace queen, he, there's a, a very good chance he would have folded the hand. Um, yeah, what I was talking about before is um, a lot of the players here are just ace eight. There isn't really normally an open for me, but um, just looking at the the players yet to act, I think Chiron was in the big blind. He's super tight. You know, if he plays a hand, he's got aces or kings. Here, the guys are pretty tight, especially looking at their three bet percentages. This guy three bets one percent of the time. That's basically aces and kings. This guy less than four percent. Um, this guy also less than four percent. This guy hasn't three bet once in uh, the 260 hands, so we can only assume that he's only three betting aces or kings as well. So, um, and then besides that, there's really um, I, I felt that, that um, gave me a good enough incentive to just to just open the pot there and uh, try to steal the blinds. It's actually I'm at a good position on this table because it looks like there's um, some players that will um, will get in there pre-flop a little bit more, but they're both to my right, and also the fish at the table is directly to my right. This guy's three betting 4.6%, um, this guy 75 so uh, 
they're definitely looking to make, get it get in there and fight a little bit more um, pre-flop than the other guys who I'm assuming are just uh, just more of your typical FPP uh, grinder and here I'm just gonna flat with kings um, to the four times open by this player um, I find that that's the better play I mean here we got a squeeze a big squeeze out of this player and um, that's exactly what we want when we're flatting with a hand like kings here and um, <clears throat> I'm definitely gonna back raise here I think I'm just gonna shove because back raising to a small amount here is putting enough of my stack in where I'm committed and I think it just looks a lot more fishy shoving I'm gonna get looked up lighter here by shoving with kings as a matter of fact I don't think he's folding I don't think he's probably even folding a hand like pocket tens maybe even pocket nines here um, might even look me up with a hand like ace king to this shove so I uh, think shoving is, is better than a small back raise there <clears throat> and I do get called and ace king so that's kind of a cooler gonna try to avoid a jack or a uh, ace here and I do and um, I get it in but um, at the same time by flatting kings there I mean full ring play is really nitty had I three bet the uh, the four times open I I don't know if this player would have um, would have four bet and got it in I have a note on him um, he seems to be a pretty aggressive player there and uh you definitely can't fault his play by calling there with the uh with the ace king because my hand just looked pretty pretty fishy there he he didn't, shouldn't really expect to be dominated there all that often with ace king and he called pretty quickly but um my reasoning for flatting with kings there uh to the initial open was just because um I find that in full ring it's it's the players are so nitty that to to really get action you got to you got to sometimes play your hands a little bit um more unconventional I guess I would I would call it um I mean there's even been been spots in in a full ring game where I will open fold kings to say say there's a tight under the gun opener and then under the gun plus one who you know three bets two percent of the time three bets it okay say say under the gun who opens maybe eight percent of the time which is you know a standard full ring knit opens to four times and then under the gun plus one makes it like twelve or fourteen or whatever they make it i'd go ahead and actually fold kings in that spot because um you know say I'm on the button with kings and it gets back to me after that action I would just op I would just fold kings wouldn't put in a four bet wouldn't flat because you can almost put put the player who uh three bet and under the gun open there on aces pretty much every time and you know say say there's a small chance that they do have a hand like queens they're they're really not gonna even give you action if you shove there because you're just gonna look ridiculously strong I mean it already looks like they can only have aces and you're shoving over them well then you must have the aces you know and here um, uh, fish limp called I, I um, raise it up with ace jack and flop the nuts I'm out of position but I'm just gonna call and then check to him on any churn churn pairs the board so that's not great for me but um, I'm still not going to be folding this hand against him. And uh, we'll see what he does. He bets 15, and now I'm just going to get it in. Hope he doesn't have king 10 or king queen. Hope to get called by um, maybe trips or... All right, he folded, so... I think that's fine. The board was starting to get a little scary. I thought I might even be drawing dead there, but definitely not going to fold. I'll put a note on him that um, he limp called, pre-flop, check raised, uh, 10, 10 queen king, rainbow flop, 10 to s or 
6 to 16 and um, then uh, then bet folds 15 on churn with only 20 left meaning that this guy um, while playing fishy he can still try to make moves just so I know that in the future I don't know if I'm going to be playing a lot of hands against this guy in the future but it's always just nice to have have that kind of note But, uh, yeah, I find that there's a lot of value in um, in slow playing big pairs and uh, big hands preflop. A lot of times, say, an under-the-gun player opens. I've, I do three bet a lot in this game, too, and um, but most of my three bets will come from uh, late position opens. I find that a lot of the players here aren't as uh, positionally aware as, uh, say, the regs in the six max games. You, you got guys who will open the button and um and they'll be folding to three bets way too often i mean there's guys who i can f I, if i had seven deuce offsuit every hand and they open the button i can i can just three bet them every time because it doesn't matter you know they're not aware of where they're opening and how that's affecting my three bet range against them actually i put the full button on here uh okay that's fine to the open i actually should have opened that hand if it wasn't uh open to me just because you have the two t really tight players in the blinds here but uh queen eight under the gun here i'll be folding and uh a6 it looks like there is a uh a dead blind so i'm going to try to steal that with my ace here <clears throat> it's an extra dollar and uh okay he calls so uh, no reads on this player yet, but he did buy in for half, so there's a good chance he's a fish. Here I flop top pair, and um, small blind leads into me for uh, about two-thirds a pot. Turn brings a flush, and he bets uh, the full pot, so I'm just going to fold. And here with uh, I flop bottom pair, I'm just going to bet it. It's a, it's a very dry board, so we'll see what he does. He just folds, so I'm able to take that pot down, which is fine there. This game's getting short-handed, um, which I don't, I definitely don't mind. Even when I'm playing 24 tables, I find the tables play pretty slow. So even if I'm playing a couple of short-handed games, it's not really not a big deal for me. So I got Ace 10 here, and um, it seems like this player here in the big blind is kind of fishy, and he'll come along a lot of times. So I think it's fine to just be calling there out of position. And uh, all right, I flop top pair, decent kicker. I'm gonna bet into this just because it's two ways and it's a pretty dry board. And uh, he folds, and we'll see what uh, Big D does. He folds too, so I'm able to take that one down by leading. And okay, I am uh, the last person left at this table here. Everybody left. Um, I'm going to see if I can, you know, sometimes someone will sit an empty table, but I find a lot of times they'll just be sitting there for a half hour before somebody comes. So, uh, we'll see, see if I can find another table that's already running. All right. I opened with ace king under the gun, got called by, uh, the short stack. I'm just going to bet four into six and then it'll be easy churn shove. Never going to be folding this hand ever no matter what churn comes and uh... king eight under the gun and be folding there All right, um... jack seven here i'm going to be folding on the button i would open that hand a lot of times but um... as you can see here we have a player with two players with very high vpps this player with more aggressive um, stats in this player with more passive, but uh, I think I'm I'm getting called every time I open that button by one of those players. So opening Jack Seven there, I don't like that at all. Now against two of um, your more nitty types, I'd be opening that hand every time on the button, just because I get so many folds. All right, Ace Ten suited here. I'll be opening this hand. And I get called by the high VPP fish here, and um, okay, I flop a gut gut shot with ace high and I bet it and he snap calls and the nine's just not a good chart card to barrel there's really not many good cards to barrel against a 
a player like this just because they're going to be calling you just about every time. And um, River is not a good card to try to bluff either, so I'm just going to check and uh, let them have that one. <clears throat> Do seven under the gun. I'll be folding that. Okay, I found um, another table. It looks like it has a fish on it, so I'll be closing out this table. And bring in the new table. I'm going to have to wait a little bit before it lets me post my blind. But uh pick up Jack King here in the small blind, so we'll see what the action is when it gets to me. If this player limps, I'll probably just complete my small blind. And uh, all right, he opens, so I'm going to be folding Jack King. And three King here, be folding that. So I'd say um, that overall, my game plan for uh, for the 100 full ring, I do play fairly nitty preflop, especially in early positions. Um, yeah, I hate to give out my exact range for opening, and it always does depend on uh, on the players at the table for uh, what I'm opening. But I'd say a pretty standard opening range when you're under the gun is probably nines, nines or better, pocket pocket nines or better, and um, ace king, ace queen, ace jack suited. It's probably just about. Uh, my standard under the gun opening range. Now that can always change depending on the table dynamics. You know, if there's a big fish who's calling every raise, I might open it up a little bit. Usually not too much, but um, it all depends. And um, yeah, I'm always um, when I when I do play the 100 full ring games, I never play the uh, the 20 big blind buy-in games I always play the 50 big blind minimum because um, I can always find I, I can always find uh, good games at, even at the 50 big blind minimum you know as you go up higher in stakes there's less games running you might have to play with the the short stacking rat holers but at 100 no limit there's just no reason to just because you know there's plenty of fish at the 50 big blind games and there's plenty of 50 big blind games running. You have no problem getting the maximum allowable tables up of a uh, of 50 big blind minimum. So I'm always playing those. Uh, never playing the 20 big blind games. And I pick up queens here on uh, my table to the bottom left. So we'll see if anybody opens it. This player has a pretty high um, pre-flop raise, almost 20, which is... I mean, this guy's playing with stats that would be considered loose for six max. So, okay, we have an ideal situation here, actually, with the button opening, a fish in the small blind. It's going to be a spot where it looks like I'm stealing light. So there's, and as you can see, I got called pretty quickly by the button here. So um, definitely going to be thinking I'm stealing light here a lot and uh, want to give me action because of that. Okay. Here I flop, um, <clears throat> flop comes king, jack, three, and uh, I have queens, so there is an overcard, but uh, I'm just going to continuation bet, just because I find that an 11-8 player is really not going to be making many moves at all. It's probably going to put me on aces or kings after that flop comes, even though, you know, it's less likely I'd have kings. He's probably just not going to make any moves. I find it's just easiest to play just to bet out, even though I have like a medium strength hand that's really not going to be able to take any pressure. I find that he's not going to apply pressure to me very often. So here I get queens in the small blind, and it's a real tight player opening under the gun, so I can't see doing anything but flatting there. It's too strong to just fold, but uh, at the same time when I when I three bet, He's really only going to be continuing with aces or kings. I don't think he's going to call this player would be calling a three bet there in that spot with jacks. So uh, maybe he'd call with ace king, maybe not. But uh, I find the most profitable way to play that hand for me is to just call pre flop. 
and uh, I call his flop bet. He double barrels the churn, and at this point against this player, um, I I don't know if I can continue profitably. I think maybe I can take another card. Uh, I, he's betting a little over half the pot. He has aces and kings here a lot. He also might have tens or jacks, but um. You know, I, I find the tight players like this, I'm just gonna fold queens here. I mean a lot of you might might be thinking, oh that's you know, that's way too nitty to be folding an over pair there to the second barrel. But um given his stats he does fire the churn a decent amount, but um just him opening to four times under the gun there. I think four times is a standard open, but his under the gun opening range is really tight and um I think he's he's not gonna be double barreling that flop with ace king ever really I, I've been playing with this guy I have 6.6k hands on him and um, he's really not the type of player to get out of line at all so um, I think folding queens there under the assumption that he's got aces or kings more often than he has tens or jacks is fine because um, I'm going to be facing a river bet there fairly often too with my queens and, and then calling the turn and then folding the river to a blank is just really is it's really going to be you know tough and it's going to be like questioning my turn decision but uh, I think I think that turn decision was actually the right one against that player you know if some of you are uh, six max regs watching this video um, you might think oh he's set mining with queens but it really is it really is a completely different game um, and um you really if you try to play this game like a 6 max game um the the nits are just going to they're going to tear you up cuz they're going to wait for aces or kings and wait till you have jacks or queens and stack you so um all right here's here's going to be my first three bet of the session i find this is is definitely the kind of player I'll be opening king 6 here that I want to be three betting a lot. He's he's pretty tight, but uh, he's going to have a wider button opening range. And if you just look at his fold to three bet percentage right here, he folds the three bets 83% of the time, which is very often. And he does decide to um, four bet here. I have his four bet range at 1.3%, which is really tight. Um, I do think there's possibility he could be four bet bluffing here, but not very often so I, I my first uh, when I first started playing these games um, I, I I tried five bet bluffing over the four bet over the four bets like that and I just found that you know once in a while I was right I was getting a fold but not often enough and definitely not often enough against this player to uh, to justify five bet bluffing them so um I I think that that was uh that was definitely a good spot to uh to three bet. As you can see his three his uh fold to three bet went down from eighty three to seventy one, meaning that uh his samples the sample was pretty small of him getting three bet, but um I mean that's what we had to go with, so I decided to make the three bet there. <clears throat> I felt that I was uh getting a fold very often there. So here I open and uh, get called in two spots, and it's a 4-6 jack with a couple of clubs, and I uh, decide to continuation bet the flop, and I'm called in two spots, so, and then get led into for half pot on the turn, and I I'm not going to make a move here, I'm just going to be folding my ace high. I think that continuation bet is... Uh, a bit debatable, but I do think it, it gets folds there fairly often. Obviously not in that spot. I was called down by both players, but I think that's fine to continuation bet here. I'll be folding ace seven here in middle position. As far as the open there too with ace ten offsuit, I wouldn't always open that hand either. Um it's a little bit loose to be opening there from that position and at a full ring table, but um you know it's not terrible. All right, I pick up aces here, and uh, it's opened under the gun, and this is not a spot where I'm going to be slow playing a big pair, just because uh, it's an under the gun open, meaning his range is going to be stronger 
he has an open, I mean I only have eight hands, but he's folded all eight, so we're going to assume he's a reasonably tight player. And I have aces, so if he has a hand like kings or queens and uh, doesn't want to fold them, I definitely want to get, get some money in the pot, build a pot up. And uh, he does fold, so I'm able to take it down. And uh, queen two here on the button. And, um, you know, this isn't normally a hand at three bet, but again, just in, as an example, this might not be a huge exa um, huge sample I have on him, but he's folded to every three bet so far. So, uh, and I'm in position, so I'm just going to try to steal that, make it three to 9.5, and see if I can take this one down pre flop. And I get four bet yet again, and, um, I find that a lot of the players here, um, as well, as you can see, the other guy made a 4-bet from 10 to 27, which is really large. And this guy went from 9, 9.5 to 31, which is just ridiculously big. I mean, he's, he's basically just saying, I'm not folding. I mean, I have seen players here put in 30% of their stack, 31% of their stack, and then fold to the all-in. But... It's just, it's absolutely terrible play to ever be doing that with any hand. Putting in, you know, nearly one-third of your stack and then folding all in is, is pretty terrible. So I'm just going to assume that he had it and was not folding there because they, they usually don't fold. But uh, at the same time, when he's making such a large size, you know, I'll put a note on this guy. Um, four bet, 9.5 to 31 out of position. Um, he's really not going to be able to have a balanced 4-bet range at all. And and really, most of the players here don't 4-bet bluff. But um, even the fact that they don't 4-bet bluff and make their 4-bet so big is uh, going to be kind of exploitable for me because uh, then I can just keep 3-betting him a lot and really um, and know that if he's going to 4-bet, he's not folding. So um, he's really not going to play back at me pre-flop without going broke, which which should give him a pretty pretty tight pre-flop 4-bet uh, pre range. So uh, I tried 3-betting twice so far, and uh, both of them got 4-bet by uh, pretty nitty players. So I uh, guess I'm getting feel like I'm getting a little bit unlucky with that. It's definitely not always like that, and it's not going to uh, deter me from 3-betting in the future. I find that a lot of the money that I make off the regs in uh, this game, in the 100 full ring game, just comes off of pre-flop, just because they fold fold way too much pre-flop to 3-bets. And like I was saying earlier, they're uh, not positionally aware, so I can 3-bet the heck out of their late position opens and just take down a lot of pots. Let's see if I can find a new table. Get a fresh table up. Um, that's another thing that uh, I like to do while I'm playing the full ring. Um, is um, while I'm playing 24 tables, you know, you you think that oh, it's it's going to be impossible to table select playing 24 tables. It's really not, unless you're playing all fast tables, which I don't. I mix in the fast and the the non-fast. It's really not that tough. Because the tables play so slow that you c you really have time you have time in between hands you know there'll be times when you're clicking you know click 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 and then you know there'll be like a five to ten second gap and that I find that's just perfect to to f click on your little hold'em manager uh, the table manager and hold'em manager and uh, f I usually just click on the VPP button and then it here I can even bring it in here I click right here on the VPP button and it organizes tables um, from highest to lowest VPP and actually these are all pretty good VPP tables I normally wouldn't close any of these while I'm 24 table and I usually look for the ones that have only like 14 15 16 percent VPP um, and close all the ones that have a 15 or lower VPP and then here I open which uh, jacks. I got called by a pretty fishy player. I'm just going to check. 
I uh, don't think he's calling a bet there with any hands that I beat, and I, I find that these players will take a stab at it a lot. And now once that river hits, he's going to have an 8 or a 10 a decent amount, and he's going to call a half pot bet there um, with an 8 or a 10. I don't think he's folding, so I, I will lead that river. Um, the first two streets, I was just trying to pick off a bluff. On the last street, I was trying to get value from... Um, a worse pair and he just ended up folding so as I was talking about the uh, table manager here and hold the manager I just I click this it'll organize it here VPP highest at top I just make it so it's like that I close all the ones with 15 or less and um, you know it's usually my um, my bottom you know three or four tables with the lowest VPP I close those three or four and then I just look for some new ones with higher VPPs to open up because just in general, the tables with the higher VPP are going to have more fish and uh, be better to play. So here I open with eights, and I'm just going to continuation bet. Uh, my range is pretty, to him, is going to be pretty narrow there. Um, a jack churns, so that's going to be a good card for me to continuation bet, I think, uh, again, on the churn, just because I'm going to be able to rep ace-king. And he calls really quickly and uh, you know he might have like king queen or something here that I might be able to get him off of but uh, I think that he might have a hand like you know maybe you know a, a strong hand too I, I don't think I'm going to be able to get him to fold a whole lot alright he has kings and I think he was probably going to snap call um, a river bet there just with the over pair because he, he could probably think I could be value betting like ace queen there and uh, bluffing a lot too. So I'm going to put a note on him. That was my under the gun open. So just call my under the gun open with king king, which isn't anything um, um, crazy. I mean, normally when an under the gun player opens, unless he's a fish or really loose, I won't be three betting kings either. And um, in this spot, I could three bet, but we have um, a a higher VPP player here in the small blind. I think it's there's more value in just calling with king queen here, um, especially since this player isn't full stack. Say this player had 100 big blinds, I would definitely um, be more inclined to three bet the hand there. But um, since he's not, I just decide to uh, to call. And uh, here I have second pair and a gut shot, but. You know, I mean, it's, it's going to be tough to get action from a hand without a split if I hit the straight, and I'm just going to fold king-queen there. I don't have the best hand there very often. Nines here, I'll open under the gun. That's just about my cutoff as far as pairs go. I'll open eights sometimes, too. You know, seven, sixes, fives under the gun. Just um, with, with a nine-handed game, there's going to be... Um, more chances for the players to have you dominated with those low pairs so I won't even uh, open those hands. I haven't gotten into um, a spot that I that I did want to talk about as well. Um, give, me, give me one second. I'm going to figure out one of these tables to close out because I have a new one. Ah, the new one is not that great. I'll just keep the ones I have open for now. Okay, here I open with nines, um, seven eight king rainbow flop. So I'm gonna continuation bet. I get called pretty quickly here, and I'm just gonna bet again because I think I have the best hand here a lot. And uh, and he does fold, so I'm able to take that one down with the double barrel. Now if he raises that churn, I'm probably gonna just have to fold it. But uh, the churn brought a lot of gut shots, and I don't think he folds a pair there. Um, that often, maybe he did fold, end up folding a pair there, but that's completely fine just because we don't want to give him a free draw. Okay, here I get aces, and I'm gonna here with sixes. I'll call in the small blind. Um, you could three bet too. That's fine. It's a, a smaller open to 2.5, which a lot of people do on the button. Here I make my um, three bet from three to nine in position, wh which I could even go smaller than that just because of the small stack size. Um, I think going to eight would be fine too. Seven might be a little too small, but uh, and okay, this is an interesting flop here because I think his range is really wide, um, but this flop is so dry, and there's about nineteen dollars, eighteen fifty-five after a rake. There's nineteen dollars in the pot. He's got about two and a half times pot, and I'm just gonna shove here, 
and um, I find that it's the turn cards are just going to be so many cards that are going to be tough to play and I don't think he's folding a pair there that often probably definitely not folding a straight draw they love to call their uh, open ended straight draws so instead of um, instead of um, with, with that uh, stack size there instead of trying to play a churn card which um, you know I'm never gonna be playing three streets there then want to really get ugly but I, I could all you could also make the argument for betting about about pot on the flop and then shoving any churn that doesn't bring the straight but um yeah, you know, I I, th I think it's fine to just shove the flop there. I mean, he doesn't have a ridiculous. It's not like he's got like five times the pot. Five times the pot there, you definitely would be um, opening yourself up to uh, to getting. Uh, well, I don't want know if I want to say exploited, but um, I just think that would be maybe too much to be risking um, by shoving. But uh, since he only had about two and a half times the pot there, I think shoving aces on that wet board is fine. <clears throat> okay, what I was um, going to talk about before was um, playing small pocket pairs in uh, in this game. Um, I will find that, that some regs... All right, here with King 7, I'll be opening the button. This uh, Chirin 80 is uh, the, the guy who tried to get famous being a, a stars pro. And uh, you can just steal his blind all day. He's, you can basically just pretend he's not there. And if he does 3-bet you, he has aces or kings and just fold. But um, what I was going to talk about before was playing small pocket pairs in in this game. You really have to be um, careful um, playing the small pocket pairs. Say like um, an under the gun player opens to four times, um, and you're and it folds to you. You're sitting on the button with like pocket twos. Okay, that that might be a, an okay place because you're playing a, a a strong range of probably like big pairs and ace king, ace queen there. That might be an okay place, but I still don't like to call if it's a competent reg because I just um, I find that a lot of them are so nitty that even if you flop your set, you're not you're not always going to get paid off. So, and a lot of them will take will take the um, all right here with eight nine suited. I could play, but uh, I'm just going to fold this one just because um, we got some pretty you know, higher percentage squeezers, especially in the big blind. Um, and for the most part in full ring, I just, I tend to play extra nitty. So here with queen 10, it's definitely not going to play this hand against a tight open in uh, early position. But um, in the the situation I was just talking about, I think calling with twos would be okay there, a small pocket pair. But Another spot that I see where I definitely would never call with a small pocket pair that I do see some regs make this uh, mistake sometimes is say a tighter player under the gun opens and then you got two or three other tight regs calling the open. Now what are you going to put them on? Oh great, I got three bet. And and this is what I was talking about a little bit earlier. Chiron 80, he's got kings or ace king here. You know, maybe maybe we could put queens in his range, but probably not. And um, he makes it 14. And, you know, against a lot of, you know, his range is so strong that I can just shove. But I like just messing with guys. I'm going to make a, a small four bet here, you know. And I, I think he's probably going to shove over this almost every time because he's got a big hand. Okay, maybe he was. Maybe the guy does have a a three bet bluff in his range, <laughs> but uh, but as you can see, that his th his uh, three bet size is just ridiculous. Three to fourteen is just it's insane. It's completely unnecessary to make that large of a three bet. I mean, you're you're gonna be playing, and then he's probably gonna continuation bet about two-thirds pot on the flop and then be playing an awkward you know churn stacks is going to be like about a pot and a half and it's just uh, it's just completely unnecessary that three bet size by him but um I was trying to talk about a little bit before was with a small pocket pair deal so you're dealt deuces on the button a tight under the gun player opens to uh opens to three times and you have 
two regs, you know, tighter regs that, you know, maybe have a 15 VPP, which is pretty standard for a reg at these stakes. You got two or three callers, and then it's to you on the button with pocket twos. That's just a spot where I think if you're calling with, with twos, you're just lighting money on fire because when you hit the set there in that spot, you're really you got to think about the range of the of the other callers um with say the 15 vpp who called the under the gun raise now those guys are very often are going to be playing pocket pairs you know maybe sevens eights nines tens maybe up all the way through queens so say you flop your set of twos on like a seven you know just just a seven ten deuce board and you get action from one of those players who called the preflop, um, called the under the gun preflop raise. You're just, you're just gonna be in such a bad spot anytime you get action because, you know, their range is pretty much gonna be sets on those kind of flops. And uh, here I have ace nine, and there's a four times open. I don't have a big sample on this guy, but I'm gonna three bet him here, and he calls really quickly, and. Um, so I'm in a continuation bet about half pot here with uh, my top pair, and I'm able to take that one down. And um, so far on the sample of him, he doesn't like to fold the three bets so much. So um, for now, that's not a player that I would be targeting with light three bets in the future. He uh, pretty much snap called my uh, my three bet and then snap folded my flop bet, though. I find the mistake that a lot of players at these stakes make too will um will be their continuation bets not so much in um single raise pots but in the three bet pots their continuation bets are just abnormally large um even if they have like the normal three bet size say three to ten and then the flop is at twenty dollars a little bit under twenty um if you count the rake most of those guys will be betting into those flops about fourteen fifteen dollars which is just unnecessarily large i mean i could see maybe if it's a real dry board you're trying to push someone off a draw but even then you're just you're just creating really awkward spots for you on the turn because then you you think about it on the turn you're looking at about a fifty dollar pot with well what'd you put in 50 you put in about 25 so you got 75 you you got exactly a pot and a half left and it just puts you in such a weird churn spot with a pot and a half you know any anywhere from a pot and a half to double the pot on the churn is just to me it's really it just puts puts you in a really weird spot unless unless the board's really dry but um all right, here I pick up aces again, and this is the same player that uh, called my three bet before, so I'm just going to three bet him again. Actually, getting quite a few hands um, for just four tabling full ring. It's not always like this. Sometimes I'll be playing 24 tables of full ring, and it seems like I'm going half an hour without getting aces, but uh seem to be getting a decent amount of hands pre flop. <clears throat> In this session, that time he does fold to my three bet, and uh, I can I can make that three bet to a smaller size there just because of the the guy's stack size. He's only playing a fifty dollar stack, so with an eight dollar three bet, it's gonna be absolutely no problem getting getting his stack, and I can bet half pot on the flop, half pot on the churn, and then he's gonna have less than half pot left on the river. <clears throat> so that that's definitely a consideration I took. Um, when making the smaller three bet from three to eight there. And here I decide to open ace three in the cutoff. It's pretty standard. Um only time I would even consider folding that hand in the cutoff would be if you have real aggressive three betters in the blinds or who are gonna make your life difficult. But uh at the same time if you do have real <clears throat> one thing that I haven't showed in this video and it doesn't seem like I'm I might not get into that situation today in this video but if you do have um the real aggressive three betters um I like to make my four bets small so it, it definitely gives me room to four bet bluff against those guys and one thing I would uh caution against though is my four bets have been when I've tried four bet four betting in this game 
whether it be with aces you know with a big pair or whether it be as a bluff I find that these guys really they love to react by calling the four bet in uh, the 100 full ring game so um, maybe y y y you want to just start out by only four betting I, maybe it's because I do it so much smaller I mean as you can see I've been four bet twice so far and the guys went put 27 and then the other guy went 31 my four bets are usually to about 20 21 or 22 dollars so that's probably one of the reasons my four bets have been getting called the guys see the the small four bets they don't they don't know how to react because they've never seen it before so maybe they start calling um and, and you know that's that's really that's completely fine just figure out the guys that like to do that and then you know only four bet your value range which is going to be really tight most of the time and don't uh don't four bet bluff those guys but there are guys that you can get away with the small four bet bluffs against in this game and i have executed that um against some of the regs in this game so uh, i haven't gotten that situation yet and i'm probably gonna be wrapping up this video in uh, a few minutes or so so probably won't get in that situation but um the the spot where i do like to use the small four bet bluff is when say i open the button and the big blind three bets eh, jack eight here in the cutoff i can open that you know it's not standard to open that but i don't think it's it's negative ev at all with uh no reads on this guy this guy's you can just pretend he's not there and then no reads on the big blind okay so the big blind leads into me and i'm gonna raise this bet it's just gonna be a one street bluff because I find a lot of times when they lead half pot like that, that um, that they're uh, just trying to steal from you. Okay, so now I actually hit a pair, and I I decided that since I did hit a pair, I'm going to continue the bluff and bet almost full pot and try to get them to fold like maybe a ten here, and uh, see if that works. I was just only going to fire one street there. But um, I, I think I'm going to try to apply more pressure now that I hit that card. And, uh, oh, great, now I might have to really, really continue the bluff here. He checks pretty quickly on the river, and uh, I'm going to continue to fire all in. Hope, pray to God I don't get called here. Hopefully he has ace three and finds a fold. No reads on this player. Don't bluff the fish is like the cardinal poker rule, and I'm breaking it right here. But uh, we'll see if I can get him to fold. Yes, got it. Okay, I'm gonna unpost my blinds here, and uh, you might want to just disregard that hand that I just played because it's really spewy. I didn't notice it before the hand started, but the guy's got one star here, which is bronze stars. And these games are almost always fish. Never bluff the fish. Don't try doing what I just did. Um, I, I don't know. I don't even know if my river bluff there was was uh, positive EV, but I, I really wanted that pot, so I took it. Um, yeah, I probably got him to fold a hand like ace three small ace I find these these players love to call with their you know their their ace small aces you know thinking oh I can make a straight the wheel and that's probably that that's just the kind of hand that he'll play like that you know and I was afraid I was afraid of even getting snapped off by a small ace because I've seen players call with even less than that so you know if I would have gotten called by ace two or ace three in that spot I wouldn't even been surprised um he also could have, you know, rivered a straight with a hand like, you know, seven ten or made two pair that he didn't want to fold. But uh, yeah, I, uh, I just I felt like spewing on one of my last hands. So I'm gonna click the sit out button here, and uh, luckily that one worked out for me. I wouldn't recommend making that play very often against an unknown, though. Okay. Um, let these hands play out. See if I can find any more discussion. And uh, I think this is a good time to bring up my 
hold a manager graph here and just um, use the filter of today because I haven't played any other hands today and I'll try to fit this in the screen here I made $116 on the session and um, display all in EV so I ran good for the session my EV was uh, just about $48 and um, one money in non showdown and I do find that here I can even show you my month uh, monthly graph um, uh, I've been pretty much playing almost all 100 full ring this month with as you can see at this this part where it gets real choppy I was playing that was on the weekend I was playing like some 600 and 1k 400 games but uh, for the most part it's been 100 full ring and I just been pretty much crushing in the non showdown section um, I think most of that a lot of that not most of it but a lot of it comes from um, just uh, the weak play well pretty much all of it probably comes from the weak play of the regs at uh, at the 100 full ring game but um, a lot of it comes from pre-flop stealing I would say and, and then post-flop too I mean a lot of the guys fire one street and then give up almost every time so find a lot of good spots like that so um yeah, I was only playing four tables today. I'm I'm normally playing uh, 24 when I play 100 full ring, and I probably play maybe a little bit nittier than I was playing today. Some of those hands, like the Ace 10 that I opened from M from middle position, I wouldn't be opening when I'm playing 24 tables. But um, I I don't find that it's really that tough for me to um, to play 24 tables of full ring. If you, if you play six max and you can play 12 to 15 tables you should have absolutely no problem playing 24 tables of um of 100 full ring because when you're playing 24 tables of 100 full ring you're playing with other players who are also playing all those tables and it just tends to slow the games down to the point where you know sometimes you'll have five or six second gaps in the action where you you're just sitting there and you know there's nothing to do even though you're playing 24 tables they p play so slow and the reason I've actually been playing this game so much um, this month is because I have a four thousand dollar milestone um, once you get to four four hundred thousand VPPs on stars for the year they give you uh, four four thousand dollars for the price of fifty thousand FPPs so I'm just trying to clear that bonus out and I'm actually getting uh, pretty close to that. I hope to have it done before Christmas. I think I have about uh, 9,800 left to go um, before I get that done. So hopefully I can get that done. Uh, I, I definitely think I'll get that done before Christmas. But um, when I'm playing the 24 tables of uh, full ring, I think with the mixed in, just I mean I don't discriminate between the fast and non-fast, so it's probably about half fast tables, half non-fast, and I get I think about a little more than 400 VPP per hour, which isn't great. Um, if I were if I were to only play the fast tables, I'd I'd probably get it up to, you know I don't know for sure, but probably over 500, at least over 500 VPP per hour playing uh, the 100 full ring. You no, know, which isn't too bad. Um, the problem is a lot of these players, that's all they play for. You know, the guys are, you know, they win at less than one big blind per 100. Some of them even lose money in the game, and the only reason they're in the game is uh, to grind the VPPs. But um, I would say if you are if you fall into that category of one of the players who is just grinding the VPPs at 24 tables, maybe try... Um, cutting down the tables a little bit and um cuz while while most of the players in this game grind the VPPs there's definitely lots of money to be made you know you just got to find you know get a little better maybe and find the better spots um th just find out the spots where the money is to be made and um maybe if uh, I think if some of these players cut down on the tables maybe they could get better at that and then gradually move up the tables um bump it up uh, to get back to the 24, but uh, for me, I don't find it's very difficult playing the 24 like I was saying earlier. It's um, 
it's fairly easy for me to uh to play 24 tables and really you know play my play my a game on all the tables so um i hope you found this uh video instructive i'm going to close it out now uh show my graph uh thanks for watching my video um if you liked it let me know if you have any questions you can ask me in the forum um possibly be making more uh full ring videos in the future I'm not sure. There was some spots that I was uh, able to talk about today that I didn't even really um, find myself in, like with the small pocket pairs, um, talking about the four betting. Um, you know, maybe it's it's probably a little easier to explain that if I actually am involved in the hand while it's happening. But uh, hopefully you did understand what I was talking about a little bit with those kind of things. So uh, this was Ross with Drag the Bar signing out. Thanks for watching my video. Goodbye.